Hey y'all, I'm Brooke Hoover, a Louisiana native, actor, writer, and comedian. I've lost 100 pounds through diet and exercise, or shall I say, lifestyle changes. My 20 year and counting health journey has taught me that just like taking a diet pill for weight loss, body positivity doesn't magically happen overnight. I'm working on regaining my self-esteem and rekindling my love affair with Cajun and Southern comfort food in a healthier way, all the while juggling eating as clean as I can, reestablishing myself in the entertainment industry, which, as we know, is historically fat-phobic, all the while showing my inner fat girl some love. That's fat with a PH. Pretty hot and tempting. Let me tell y'all a tale or two. At this point, y'all might be thinking, Brooke, your podcast isn't really about weight loss tips, but you kind of like say in your tagline, your 100 pound weight loss journey, I, I, I want to hear some weight loss tips. Well, y'all, I focus on the more holistic side of things by like taking care of your body. And if your body needs to shed some of its weight by managing what we're eating, doing physically and telling ourselves mentally from a more positive standpoint, then the weight loss will happen when and if we are in balance. And that all sounds kind of like great and like theory, but it isn't always so easy to believe or to like put into play or to like take on from a take charge kind of standpoint. There are plenty of places that promise you you'll get results or rapid weight loss. For so long, fat loss and weight loss have been marketed as what we need to do to get healthy, but we've never really focused on what we're gaining. And yes, there is that term gains, which makes no sense to me because it sounds like an oxymoron, though I'm I'm not a moron. I know what the term gains means. It's like building muscle mass and tone. It, it just bothers me because it sounds like it was a term made up by a fraternity brother. And to any fraternity brothers out there listening to this podcast, I'm sure there are a lot of you. I mean, no offense, but I digress. Y'all, if you solely focus on weight loss, erg, you are likely missing out on upping nutritional content. And the only thing you're gaining is mental anguish and hence maybe more weight because stress, cortisol, and all of that when they're elevated, it makes it really hard to lose weight. I wanted to share my trajectory kind of like in a sort of timeline with y'all because I've been asked, it's kind of like one of my frequently asked questions when people find out the amount of weight that I've lost and the amount of health I've gained. Ooh, that sounds so pretentious. And I'm sharing this in hopes that it may help y'all wherever you are on your journey, be it if you're just looking to change up some habits, actively lose weight, whatever you are trying to do. And as we know, I'm not a doctor and I don't yet play one on TV. So this is one person's experience of losing 100 pounds without any medications or fads. I should let y'all know losing 100 pounds has taken me approximately 20 years, and it stayed off. The first thing we need to realize is whether you have a chronic condition like I do, polycystic ovarian syndrome is my cross to bear, ooh, as they say, or whether you do not have such a chronic condition, entering the health and wellness realm will at first be something you do because you almost feel like you should do it or must be doing it or it's the right thing to do, but eventually it will become part of your life. And one of the terms out there that I actually buy into, I don't buy into many of the diet culture terms, but one that I do buy into is lifestyle change as opposed to diet. That's some of the bait I am taking because it's the truth. And so my mama actually first introduced me to the South Beach diet, which again should be called the South Beach lifestyle change. Um, she introduced it to me when she was doing her plethora of research using dial-up internet. Um, she was trying to help me because uh, no doctor at that point could figure out what all my symptoms going on might mean. And mama was trying to, was pinpointing, doing research on the internet that it could be polycystic ovarian syndrome. And she learned that the South Beach lifestyle change would be ideal for someone like me um, for its higher in lean protein and vegetable content over added or refined sugars. And so in a nutshell, the South Beach lifestyle change is the Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean lifestyle change, Mediterranean way of eating, shall we say. And that's still how I eat to this day for the excuse me, saliva swallow for the most part. 
I started out my first few days of the South Beach lifestyle change in the mountains of North Carolina before I ate eggs, which was one of the few foods you could eat, working my way through weeks one and two, which are considered the hardest weeks because that's when you're completely withdrawing from sugar, even sugar from fruit. It's more like a less calcium-tastic, less fatty-tastic style of eating as compared to keto or Atkins. My moods changed like a beast. I was ravenous for sugar or even for a potato, but after about five days, I remember feeling so much better, clearer-headed even. And my mama didn't have a scale at her house, so I couldn't measure my weight, which I actually think is a great thing because I had to measure it based on how I felt. So after about a month, I went back to my apartment in Brooklyn, and God bless so many of my friends, including Missy and Josh, Josh and Missy, who were right on board with my lifestyle change, and they made brown rice stuffed peppers with me like all the time. And at this point, I could start back um, to adding in like grains like brown rice, quinoa, and um, darker foods such as like sweet potatoes as opposed to white rice or white potatoes. To this day, I eat white potatoes. I love white potatoes. I can live without white rice. I can live without white pasta. Eh, that's my thing. But if you want to eat it, everything in moderation, including moderation. Okay. I noticed that also walking up the four flights of my best friend Brian in my apartment was easier for me since I had done some dietary changes. And speaking of, I was taking public transit as opposed to driving, and that made a huge difference. And I believe I lost like maybe like 20 pounds or so in three months. I don't really know because I don't really remember tracking my weight or keeping a diary or anything like crazy like that in Brooklyn. I was just all about feeling better and feeling like the flow and feeling like whatever needed to come off to come off. I don't know that a scale existed at our apartment, and I think it was honestly for the better. I was more mindful of what I was eating, and I was also schlepping and taking public transit, and they started to become easier for me. Instead of like hoofing it to the subway, I was like, oh, I'm walking to the subway. And most importantly, it seemed like my polycystic ovarian syndrome symptoms were getting a lot more manageable. Mainly, my periods were becoming more regular even though I was still on prescription meds for PCOS at that point in time, it seemed like my lifestyle changes were really putting everything into gear, like all the gears were flowing. Something else I did around that same time, I joined the YMCA, the YMCA in, in Brooklyn, and I loved that place. I would walk a good like quarter of a mile one way and then a quarter of a mile back because finding parking was way too hard, so it was much easier just to walk. So I was getting in some exercise while en route to go to the gym to exercise. It was great. I didn't have much money to spend on eating out or drinking out, so it was kind of a win-win um, that like eating out and drinking out a lot were off the table too for me. I still don't remember, y'all, if I bought a scale at this point, but I did sometimes use the one at the Y, Y-M-C-A, and I'm going to do it in sign language because with my other hand, I am holding um, my rose quartz, so Y-M-C-A, and I, I was surely I'd lost about 50 pounds or so, and that had taken me uh, maybe like close to a year, um, but then of course plateaus happen. And they happened around the same time I moved to New Jersey and I drove my car more and took public transportation a lot less. And it's not like I didn't try to do public transportation. I bought a bike. I drove an hour north to Paramus to buy one. I shoved it into my old Mustang at the time and um, I nearly got killed on the bike a week later when this aggressive driver was like making a left turn when she didn't have the right of way. She's in a Range Rover and she called me a bitch, nearly plowed me over. So I sold the bike 10 days later. I took it as an omen. And don't worry, y'all. I flipped that bike and I ended up making $45 profit. Hey, who's the bitch now? What? And I joined a bougie snobby gym that I had to drive to, but it had a great pool and a really good rate for those of us using the gym at off-peak hours. But I noticed that when I would over-exercise, not necessarily over-swim. I don't think swimming's not an activity you can overdo, but like over machine it, over cardio, I would get more hungry. And of course I'd eat more and I didn't lose weight. I hit another plateau, even though I was going to the gym several times a week. And I noticed the scale was almost going up again. 
I had to quit the gym because I couldn't adjust, um, ju justify affording it anymore or spending 30 minutes to commute less than a mile because of traffic and the time it took to find a parking space just to park by the gym. I gained more time in sanity and started doing YouTube exercise videos at home, including yoga. And this is what I also want to say to y'all is exercise not, is not always about pushing yourself or going until you're exhausted. That mentality and actual, actually the physicality of doing nothing but cardio or pushing yourself can raise your cortisol levels and again, make weight loss hard or reverse weight loss. So focusing on adding in yoga, Pilates, and other physical elements that has a less push, push, push vibe is um, also, I think, what really helped me start losing weight. Now, I'm not saying stop doing cardio at all. In fact, sidebar, right now I'm focusing on amping up my cardio because I want to lower my blood pressure and that that is very much helping. We'll probably have an episode about that. I'm just saying you need to, we all need, I need, we all need to find that balance and just continue to listen to your body with the levels and types of exercise that you're doing. When something gets boring or when you hit a plateau, it's time to change something up. And if any gain, if you gain, oh, pun intended, if you gain anything from this episode, that's what I'm talking about. Listen to your body listen to your heart and you'll know when it's time to kind of like shift, which is also a short film. Harry and I did check it out. Shift with a Y. It's a riff on lift, but that's when it's time to shift what you're doing lifestyle wise. Right. But I started doing acupuncture again after meeting this fabulous acupuncturist through a lady who did some healing work. And this lady promised me she would help me with this hormone, hormone level check spit test reading thing where you like spit into a vial for a month and you save it in your freezer and then you ship it off and it tells you which hormones are off. But like this healing lady went MIA as most healing ladies do. And I'm, I'm joking. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, in the natural health realm, you do have a lot of wackos, myself included. But then she, the one good thing that this healing lady did was she recommended me to an acupuncturist and his name is Joe. And he spent like nearly an hour and a half with me during our first intake session. And I told him I felt comfortable talking to this straight white male about all of my struggles with PCOS symptoms and my triumphs with managing them with lifestyle changes um, and um, leaving prescription medication behind. But Joe like full on understood my frustration when I told him, Joe, I eat healthy, I exercise. And yet I'm at this plateau. I've been at this plateau for a while. I'm constantly exhausted. And Joe did have me do the hormone spit test thing. And he read the readings. And um, it is important to look at your hormone levels when you're having endocrine difficulties, right? And all the spit test honestly did for me, though, was dry my mouth out, take up room in my freezer for a month, and it just told us that my cortisol levels were slightly elevated. And Joe was like, you know, I could have, we could have guessed this, but I had been insistent on doing the spit test because I love doing all this kind of additional testing that insurance does not cover. So a better test actually was just a, a kind of like a somewhat standard blood test, learning that my thyroid levels, while according to my doctor or any doctor, they were in normal range, but according to like an acupuncturist or a nutritionist or any less Western, not covered by health insurance practitioner that you'll meet out there, they will tell you that they're still out of whack within that quote unquote normal range. There's a high and a low and a middle. And I was at the higher end, meaning in the thyroid case that I was hypo- suffering from hypothyroidism. And Joe worked to help my thyroid function. And as I was always more super close on that quote unquote normal range to hypothyroidism, which would explain my difficulty in losing weight and my tiredness and even my propensity to having polycystic ovarian syndrome in the first place. And one afternoon, Joe told me, look, I know I told you I don't do any hardcore diet or lifestyle change, but I think you're hardcore enough to want to hear about this. And I think it's going to really help with your symptoms. I think you should do paleo based eating. And I don't mean go looking at all those paleo desserts with dates and maple syrup and honey on Pinterest. And I don't mean go eat a ribeye every night, but, but look at the principles. I think they're right up your alley and I think it would really help you. And most importantly, I don't tell many of my patients to do this because I don't want to set them up for failure, but I think you, you could do it. It's a very kind of restrictive diet, lifestyle change, eating, way of eating, but I think it can help you. 
and boy, it did. I always like a challenge, and I always like when people believe in me, but more important than that, I wanted to lose weight, but I wanted to feel better. Something felt off. And I got in a little lapsadaisical in my South Beach lifestyle change. I ate omelet cups and sweet potatoes with cinnamon for breakfast on the paleo lifestyle. I roasted vegetables and had baked chicken or fish for lunch and dinner. And when I was hardcore, like hardcore paleo, I don't remember really snacking. This is this was before I did paleo before you could find a plethora of paleo snacks out there like at Costco. But honestly, when you want to make a change, I'm going to make a change. Oh, God, Michael Jackson. Hoy. You just can't change what you eat, but also your eating habits. And I know I'm a big snacker. To this day, I'm a snacker. And the more I snack, the more I want. The paleo lifestyle was making me focus on eating more heartier, filling foods so I didn't feel the need to snack. And I mean, tell me if like, what's like a paleo name? caveman name, Ugg and Grunt, back in the paleo age were like, Ugg just wrestled woolly mammoth. Now Ugg need granola bar. No, Ugg knows a granola bar just wouldn't get him through because that granola bar has a lot of added and refined sugars. Uh, usually, unless that granola bar is paleo, but in the real paleo age, paleo style granola bars didn't exist. Then I hit another plateau and I just started feeling like heavy, like mentally, a little physically, then I was like literally like, oh, you're heavy gaining weight. I just meant like like this heaviness. And a friend on set, Ira, told me about an app and he said it was called Lose It. And at first I was like, well, I don't want to be involved with any negative diet culture stuff. But I thought I would use it to lose it. Kidding. I thought I would use Lose It to monitor what I was eating. And what I realized is that even though I was eating healthy, really healthy, highly nutritious foods, I was taking in between like a good 2,000 to 2,200 calories a day, which for my height and weight and activity level, level and desired weight, it was just a little too much, you know? So the Lose It app, they aren't sponsoring this podcast, by the way, helped me lose another like 20 to 30 pounds or so. And then March 13th, 2020 happened production, shut down, quarantine began. And I remember everyone was saying, oh, I'm going to gain so much weight being at home now. I'm just zooming and staying in pajamas and all I want to do is eat. And I woke up one morning and I was like, I am not drinking this negative Kool-Aid, even if it is sugar-free and paleo-friendly. Nope. I'm not going down this road. I don't want to hear this negative stuff. So first off, I wasn't on set anymore. And craft food service is always where I overeat. It goes kind of back to like my college days of food scarcity where I, like a paleo person, feel the need to stockpile and save and sometimes overeat the most random stuff, even if it is healthy. So I was at home and was um, food was limited at grocery stores. My mama has asthma, so we were only doing like delivery here and there. I remember, it was like super hard to get like a delivery slot. Do y'all remember that? We used to like wake up at two in the morning to try to get like an Amazon delivery slot for Amazon Fresh for food or Instacart. Meat was super expensive. I was out of work, so I relied on overnight oats and eating less meat and less food in general because, again, my food scarcity kind of kicked in. But I didn't feel deprived because I focused on eating healthy as possible because I wanted good gut health, which is equal to good immune health, so I wouldn't get COVID. That's what I told myself. I focused on the positive as opposed to focusing on must lose weight during COVID. No, I focused on must eat healthy and must stay healthy to not get COVID. And at that same time, a new friend I met online named Debbie started an exercise program that I've talked about before on this here podcast. Her exercise program is called Buff Hussy. Buff Hussy. I'll say that again. She has YouTube videos. I did her classes like five days a week. Um, she would do them live on Zoom. They're like a combo of yoga and um, HIIT, high intensity interval training. And they often had a theme including like one time there was a Cinco de Mayo theme, which was inspired by her Mexican heritage. And it was just like a lot of fun. I wasn't obsessed with weight loss at all. I was obsessed with staying healthy mentally and physically so I would not get COVID. And I lost 35 pounds during a pandemic without really even trying to lose weight at all when most people said we'd all gain weight. And most people did. And most of those people beat themselves up for losing weight. And most people who would then see me, um, you know, would say, oh, you lost so much weight during a pandemic. How did you did it? do it? 
And here we are to this podcast episode. And it's like, y'all, but why? Why? Instead of weight loss or weight gain, let's focus on health gain and the weight loss will follow. Like that song, free your mind and the rest will follow. I know that's idyllic. That's not always going to happen. But that's kind of what happened for me. In my case, if the weight loss doesn't follow, because as we know, at some points it did not follow. And if that's your goal, or if you're kind of concerned about, hey, what's going on? Something feels off. Then investigate what's going on behind closed doors. And I mean, what's going on inside your body that can be contributing to that block, like mentally or physically. Talk to your doctor, healthcare peeps like I did. And I can tell you, there's no magic weight loss pill out there. And I said I did this without medication. I did. You know, I lost all this weight. I lost 100 pounds without medication. I tried medication. It did not work for me. I tried some of these supplements touted by Dr. Oz. I tried um, for like a week something called Meridia, which was a prescription drug. And I tried an over-the-counter uh, weight loss thing called Ally. None of those worked. They just made me racy, experience more anxiety, and have very, very loose stool in that order. So if someone ordered, offers you a magic pill, don't take the magic pill, okay? Do not be like Jack and the Beanstalk, all right? Because, you know, that giant growing up there is nothing but diarrhea. So weight loss really just works by like input and output. It's, it's mathematics, less calories, more exercise, but make sure what you're putting in to your body is of high nutritional value. Make sure what you're putting into your mind, our mind, my mind is of high kindness, level. And at this point, health and wellness isn't a chore. It isn't something I have to do. It's it's part of me. I know that's cheesy to say, but but it's fun. It's so much fun. I love it so much that, oh, am I fixing a cry that I have a podcast about it? Y'all, I'm always here and happy to answer questions. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at whosdatfatgirl at gmail.com. Y'all know I'm on Instagram as it's at like my first name, last name, at Brooke Hoover, but replace those O's with zeros. Not because I want to be a size zero, but because I'm being a little extra crafty and regular Brooke Hoover was already taken. Anyways, thanks so much for listening. More episodes as always to come. Thanks so much for listening, y'all. It is my hope to inspire, uplift, and entertain you with this Who's Dat Fat Girl podcast. So, if you're hungry for more, you can book me to speak or perform my solo show that inspired this podcast, Fat Girl Costumes, written by yours truly and directed by Brian Lady at your virtual or in-person event. Please visit brookhoover.com slash fluffybuttproductions or email me at contactbrookhoover at gmail.com for more info. And let's follow each other on Instagram. I'm at brookhoover. And the O's in my name are not the letter O, they're zeros. Not because I want to be a size zero, but because I guess I'm just so clever with my late 90s Yahoo self. And if you like this podcast, which I really hope you do, please give me a five-star rating and write a review on Apple Podcasts. And most importantly, share this with your friends, family, and other people you may know who are as fat as we are. That's fat with a PH.